Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at a new AI platform that will generate full feature length screenplays for you from just a simple prompt. But what I like about it is the fact that you can do more than just a simple prompt. In fact, you can do a lot more. I've also got some news on a large language model advancement that just might solve the problem of those chatbots being so forgetful. Plus, and you're gonna wanna see this, a new AI product that will solve the issue of forgetfulness between like, you and I. So it's a little on the Black Mirror side, I'm not gonna lie, but it is very intriguing. Okay, let's dive in. So first up, we have plot.ai, which is just super fun to say, plot.ai. Um, this is an AI-powered screenwriting platform, which does seem to solve the problem that ChatGPT or Claude or any of the other various AI language models run into when you try to create a full screenplay with them. For example, I gave ChatGPT the prompt, imagine you are my brilliant screenwriting partner. We are tasked today with developing an idea for a film that we will then produce into a feature length screenplay. The film is in the heist genre and will feature a crew attempting to rob an amusement park. I don't think that movie exists. If it does, it's pretty stupid. I then asked ChatGPT to give me three log line ideas. Uh, the one that I ended up picking was Roller Coaster Ransom, uh, when a disgraced former park engineer discovers a hidden fortune beneath the world's most iconic amusement park. I think it's Disneyland. To be honest, it actually doesn't sound like the worst Netflix movie. So with a second prompt, we're going to develop it just a little bit further. So after prompting ChatGPT for a three act breakdown of Roller Coaster Ransom, a name that we definitely have to focus group at some point, uh, it does provide, you know, a fairly solid three act structure for the film. Props to ChatGPT for including the double cross in act three, an old chestnut of the heist film genre. The problems, of course, start to begin when you ask, like, cool, can you write me a first draft of the screenplay? And ChatGPT is like, yeah, that's a little bit much for me. If you further subdivide that and ask ChatGPT to just write act one, it'll give it its best shot, but honestly, the results aren't that impressive. For example, in our opening scene, we made our protagonist James, uh, and it's really just him saying, this could be it. So clearly we're not writing at a David Mamet level. Having experimented with this in the past, I can tell you that it will only get worse from here. Essentially, the more you have ChatGPT generate, the more tokens it's going to use, and the more forgetful it's going to be, the more it will begin to hallucinate. For example, if we put James into a Mickey Mouse costume somewhere in act two, I can almost guarantee you that ChatGPT will forget that James is in there. And by the time we get to the end of the film, it will be Mickey Mouse leading the heist crew. But Plot Dot has figured out a way around that or has thickened the plot, if you will. Let's go check out the interface. So when you first hop into Plot Dot, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but it is free, at least it is for right now. I don't know if they're in beta or what the deal is, but um, I logged in and started generating. Um, you'll be greeted with a number of different modules. Um, everything from obviously the sparkle start um, all the way down to um, your act attack. Here we begin filling out whatever information about our story that we want. I am going to take uh, the roller coaster heist movie and plug those details in, but obviously you could just come up with something on your own if you wanted to. So with the information plugged in, the genre is a heist movie, the theme is redemption and the true value of connection. Um, the title is still Roller Coaster Ransom and the log line is just the log line that ChatGPT generated. Additionally, you can actually just un hit this unleash ideas um, button after having filled in anything else and it'll auto fill the rest in for you. So we're gonna go ahead and submit this and then the grand scheme pops in. So at this point, you can then begin answering questions like what is the central idea of this film? What are the settings of the film? Uh, what does the structure of your screenplay look like? Uh, you can also just hit brew a premise and it will take the information that you previously generated in the sparkle start section and populate from there. What's interesting from here, because we're sort of bashing two language models together, plot dot will have its own ideas about your log line. Uh, the central idea here is a disgraced thrill seeker engineers a series of dangerous stunts to infiltrate the park's vault. Um, another idea is a reclusive hacker is blackmailed into hacking the park's network. So I'll hit the first one and then our various categories are obviously auto filled in. Again, you can always manually go through 
and answer these questions yourself. From there, we go through it and answer a bunch of questions about our main character. Uh, everything from what our character's backstory is to what the character's arc and goals are. Once we have that locked, what's kind of funny is you can actually go through and sketch a portrait of your character as well. James here looks a little bit on the Ryan Gosling-y side. So after rolling up our villain, Xavier Chen, uh, who does not look very Asian, but I'm not judging, he could be half and, you know, genetics do weird things. Uh, and Emily Jones, our love interest, it's now time to move on to our narrative. Plot Dot decided that the title was The Great Escape. I don't know if it is aware that there already is a movie called The Great Escape, but whatever, uh, we'll take it and uh, it's time to weave the plot. From there, we go through and carve out the various sections of our three-act structure. Uh, we have the setup, um, the challenge, and the resolution. From here, we end up going from the macro to the micro. Uh, we're actually gonna end up switching stories, mostly because I think you're gonna see this gets pretty detailed pretty quickly. So we have modules now for each of our three acts, the setup, the challenge, and the resolution. And then within each one, we have our various sequences. And then within each sequence, we have a number of scenes. And from here, you can choose to either auto generate or manually input. Now I think all of these granular details are a clue as to how plot dot actually works, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to swap stories out for something that I did that was a little further along, and it's actually something that we saw on the channel earlier this week. So if you caught my Dolly 3 video earlier this week, you'll know that I ended up generating an image of Bruce Lee as the Terminator, and I kind of lamented on the fact that I was sad that we never got a chance to see Bruce Lee in a Terminator movie. Um, so when I ran across plot dot, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of had to. So instead of doing like say a cover version of the Terminator starring Bruce Lee, I ended up having plot dot create a new Terminator movie that happened to star Bruce Lee. Uh, plot dot came up with the idea of uh, Terminator Echo of the Dragon in which Skynet ends up using the DNA of Bruce Lee to create a ultimate terminator. The plot actually wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be. Plot Dot came up with a actually semi-coherent reason that Skynet would build a Bruce Lee Terminator. And that's namely that our main character is Arya Lee, who is the granddaughter of Bruce Lee and leader of the Resistance. Now, granted, I do think that Arya should be his great granddaughter or possibly great great granddaughter, but whatever. So for Echo of the Dragon, I ended up prompting for a five act structure, which uh, Plot Dot was happy to provide for me. Kind of wisely on Plot Dots Part 2, uh, Bruce Lee doesn't actually appear until Act 3, so that saves some money in the uh, VFX budget. So to be honest, from here, I just kind of let Plot Dot take the show uh, and approved all of the various acts and sequences within those acts. To be honest, it actually takes a little bit of time. Essentially, I had to go through and do that for 43 different sequences, each one taking, you know, about, you know, 10 or 15 some odd seconds. Not as long as actually writing a script, mind you, but, you know, it's still, it's going to take you a little bit of clicking. Once you have everything set, you can then begin generating pages. So I'm just going to take a random one from Act 3, The Creation, uh, Sequence 1, The Plan, uh, hit Scriptify, and after a moment, we have, uh, well, relatively a correctly formatted script. Now, is it great? Eh. I mean, we have some fairly clunky dialogue like scientist one saying behold the perfect killing machine modeled after the legendary martial artist bruce lee but obviously if you don't like that you can just hit scriptify again and it will generate a new page for you now what's interesting about plot dot is that we have a number of different language models that we can use to render the pages um, for example what we've been looking at is claude but you could actually switch it back to chat gpt4 and we actually have sliders for like the temperature, the frequency penalty, and the presence penalties. Um, so by playing around with the sliders, you can actually end up with something more imaginative, but possibly less accurate or more accurate and less imaginative. So but as you can see, by cranking up all of the knobs on the ChatGPT4 model, uh, we generate a script page that has a lot more detail. Uh, to me, the dialogue is a lot better, but by the time you get to the bottom of the page, um, it really starts turning into like this crazy run on sentence and then just starts yelling at you in all caps. And to be honest, actually, when you have all these sliders cranked, I find Claude to be a pretty decent writer. For example, on this page where we have Claude and all of our sliders turned up, um, the dialogue isn't as clunky as we've seen in ChatGPT4, and the descriptive passages are actually fairly decent, although you still do have to keep an eye on Claude. Uh, there was this line, this is it, the call to arms she Instagram has been dreading and hoping for. My guess is, is that Plot Dot is a, essentially a prompt matrix that's powered by a database 
of all of the various answers that you filled in as you were generating the story. So through each sequence and through each page, it can go through and reprompt ChatGPT or Claude to generate a page or pages without having to remember all of the previous pages that came before it. Thus, you won't run into the problem that we described earlier with, you know, a character dressing in a Mickey Mouse costume and then turning into Mickey Mouse later on uh, because the large language model doesn't need to worry about keeping track of that particular detail. So ultimately, is it a great script? I mean, I don't know. It's definitely better than the first spec script that I ever wrote, which I probably didn't even finish. So plot dot does have that on me. But anyone that's actually written knows that writing is rewriting. And I think that's actually a really good use case for plot dot is taking its output and treating it like it's a really, really, really fast first draft. To be honest, I think the secret killer app within plot dot is that it actually forces you to go through and make sure your story's structure is completely sound before before you even start generating. And to be honest, there is nothing new about that. There have been screenplay workbooks and uh, computer programs that have done a very similar thing in the past. You just had to manually input everything. Uh, Plot dot just offers you the ability to generate what you don't have answers for. So if you're interested in giving Plot dot a shot, and why not? I mean, it is free. Uh, the link is down below. And if you're interested in seeing Terminator Echo of the Dragon, yeah, well, so am I. So let me finish uh, printing it all out. So next up, and this section is going to be fairly short because there's a lot of math here, like math that's way above my pay grade. Uh, but over on GitHub, code and a paper titled Efficient Streaming Language Models with Attention Sinks was released. This is code that will allow large language models like Llama 2 to be able to have much longer conversations before running out of memory and begin hallucinating or forgetting things. There's a pretty compelling example. Um, I guess this is going to be running Llama, but you can see on the left, uh, this is without the streaming LLM and on the right with streaming LLM, um, within a few seconds, that's, that model performance breaks is where probably it's starting to hallucinate and then out of memory, it's just done. Whereas uh, with streaming LLM, we're still chugging along. Now, what this is actually saying and doing, I do not know, um, but you know, all that text makes me feel like Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. So basically it might not be too much longer before we're able to have much longer persistent conversations with LLMs or feed them larger volumes of work and be able to generate accurate answers based off of that work. So there's been a lot of talk about memory in this video, all of which kind of makes me feel like I'm Guy Pierce in Memento. Actually, just the day-to-day -day of keeping up with AI makes me feel like Guy Pierce in Memento. And of course, we have an AI solution to that problem. Uh, Rewind has introduced the Rewind Pendant. This is a wearable piece of tech that will record everything you say or everything that is said to you. And then using the AI agent, you are then able to ask it questions about any events that have happened since you started wearing it. Does it seem very Black Mirror? Yes, it very much does. Uh, but there are some protocols that are built into Rewind that make me feel a little bit better about it. For one, all of your data is stored locally. Uh, you can upload it to a cloud, but you don't have to. Secondly, it apparently only records your voice. Other people have to essentially opt in or give permission to the Rewind pendant in order for it to record their voices. It also apparently only records summaries of what was said, not full transcripts. It is a pretty interesting idea, but I think like most of you, I, I kind of had the knee jerk reaction of like, no way am I ever wearing that. But you know, after thinking about it, honestly, if privacy is the issue, I mean, I walk around with this thing all day long. And to be honest, I think every room in this house has an Alexa in it. And at this point, I'm pretty sure the toaster has been listening to me. So, you know, the fact that all of this information is actually stored locally, as opposed to being uploaded to some cloud server, I mean, yeah, sure, I guess. I mean, at the end of the day, for me, this will just be my wife saying, I told you so, and me going like, no, no, she did. I guess she did. If you're interested, you can pre-order the Rewind Pendant for $59, which is actually pretty cheap in all honesty. Although you do also have to have the Rewind app. That said, the Rewind app has a free tier. It is iOS only, but there is a Windows version coming out soon. That's it for today. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.